How's it going everyone? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to You and Me and Her, a love story. I don't really know how to describe what happened in the last episode except young love, young anime love. And you guys can interpret that however you would like to. However, however you'd like to unless you want to go and watch the previous episode if you have not. Because wow, just wow. But it sort of seems like we are now in a uh, full-fledged visual novel-esque relationship with the, uh, I guess, the main heroine, or one of the main heroines, if you will. And now we're here at the batting cages. Today we rented out the batting cages just for ourselves. Miyuki hits ball after ball. Her form is still just as captivating, captivatingly beautiful as ever. Meow. Huh? I hear a little meow from below me. I look down under the bench to find... Wait, I know you. But do we? Because we don't know Aoi anymore. Oh, sorry, I got distracted by this random cat. <coughs> sorry, started dying. Huh? But my phone... Wait, where'd I even put my phone? Okay. She hands me her phone and I take it. Wait, what the? It's a smartphone. What happened to her old sl her her old clamshell phone? I just called them flip phones, but okay. Right, all right, little buddy, just hold still. Now that's what cats. That's that's exactly what cat what cats sound like. It's exactly like that. Damn, I wasn't fast enough. Look, I'm sorry, okay? Good grief. Miyuki loves cats way too much. I heave a sigh and go to hand her her phone back to her. But just then my finger taps the wrong button. And oh boy. Out of nowhere a photo pops up on screen. It's that photo we took together. We look so happy together. Wait... Hold on a second. The roof is our special little place for just the two of us. So who the hell took the picture of us? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. Before I can even respond, a very red-faced Miyuki snatches the phone back from me. Your diary's on there? Now that she mentions it, I seem to recall seeing a folder full of what looked like photos of handwritten notes, judging from the thumbnail images. You take pictures of your diary entries? What for? Who would bother going to all that effort? I mean, yeah, kinda? No, not at all. Miyuki's always been the fastidious type. If that's how you pronounce that, though I think she's getting a little overly upset about it. But to be fair, I wasn't cool, or it wasn't cool of me to look at stuff on her phone in the first place. I'm really sorry, Miyuki. I shouldn't have looked. What do you mean it won't cut it? What do you expect me to do? Uh oh. Huh? Okay, you're on. Can't have you calling me some kind of chicken now, can I? Reluctantly, I get up from the bench. Miyuki hands me a metal baseball bat. Prepare to get schooled. Yeah, I'm sure this will work out. <laughs> this, is, this is definitely going to work out well, because it's worked out before. Definitely. I practice a few swings. What the hell is this music? I know my batting stance isn't perfect. Especially not in comparison to hers. Hardly. I mean, I'm trying my best. But the rest is up to sheer luck. All I can do is summon up the full extent of my strength and take the swing. Alright, bring it on. Are we gonna do it? Out of sheer luck? I know this will sound ridiculous. Trust me, I can scarcely believe it either. 
But believe it or not, when I hit that ball and nailed that home run target dead center on my first try, of course it did. As if God made it happen just to mess with me. Are we getting credits? Yep, we're getting credits. So that is a technical good end. Or like purpose. A, a, a non-accidental end, if you will. Well, I mean, everything I do is on accident, so what can I what can I even say? Okay, wh whoever plays for Utaro with that long-ass name, I'm pretty sure that's the same voice actor that plays the. Uh, I don't even I don't even know what you can call him in Oragairu. I'm pretty sure that's the same guy, but I've never heard that voice anywhere else. So that's that's like my only connection. Well, I don't want to, like, wrap up everything here and, and state my thoughts on the game because I feel like this is only, like, a taste of what's to come. I I strongly feel like we're not done. Somebody's actually named Keiichi. Wow. I feel like we are, like, far from done here. I just don't know what to do next. Like, sure, we can make other choices, but I'm not exactly sure where the game is going to want us to go. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna pan out here for the, for the remainder of this episode. I think this is the quickest I've ever gotten to credits on a uh, on an episode, so that's nice. Glad we could uh, glad we can make a new uh, record there on the channel. I mean I'm enjoying this. If you guys want to hear my thoughts so far, but man. I'm confused as hell about what's actually happening. Like, we probably just experienced the visual novel plot, but what about the overarching plot? You know, what, what kind of message is trying to be sent here? That's my dog. What, uh, what Aoi meant, what Aoi did, the, uh, inclusion of a visual novel inside a visual novel. You know, what's, what's happening here? You keep on hearing this shit about how, or at least for me, you keep on hearing, oh yeah, this is, a, uh, or, or Doki Doki Literature Club was based off of this game in a way, or at least it took inspiration. So let's see it, you know? We have not seen it yet. Not entirely. I feel like we, uh, excuse me, I think we've only taken our first step here. There's not too many credits either. Not too many people worked on this compared to, like, other visual novels, I would say. And I mean, you only have like two big names there, Nitro Plus and... Is it J-Ast or Jast or J-A-S-T? I want to say Jast. That sounds pretty good. Like, I've seen that name thrown around a whole bunch of times. So what's going to happen here? Just got a white screen. It's still very white. I don't know if the game is waiting for me to do something or what's uh what's happening. I feel like if I click then something's going to happen and then I will have skipped it, but I'll just click. And nothing's happening. Oh, there we go. That was very awkward. Oh. Now it's nighttime. Okay, so now we have a library. This is this is new. I don't want to click this one. I don't want to click that. We have a gallery though. We do have a gallery. And there is actually something I'm going to have to censor here. God damn it. Oh, wait. Yeah, there's multiple things I'm going to have to censor. I'm just going to black out this screen. Um, but in terms of CGs that we've gotten, um, here we can, we can see 61 to 80, but there's only 62. I don't know if there's going to be more. I'm not exactly sure. The music's good in this game. I don't want to click scene. Just get out of here. Okay, so what do now? Do we just load back in somewhere and make a different choice? I'm not entirely sure how we're supposed to go about this. Because, I mean, if we go back here, we only have one choice. I'm pretty sure we only have, like, one choice that we can make here. Yeah, you can only make one choice there. I don't know why I'm going back to the main menu <laughs> instead of just loading something else. Uh, god damn it. Of course, in the quick save, there's there's some stuff I'm gonna have to censor too. I'm really making my life easier for me, huh? Let's see what happens. I'm curious. Um, if we... If we go back here, what if we don't help her believe we just let her down? 
I'm sorry. Damn, the music just can't cuts out. <laughs> I just can't do it. At the end of the day, I can't change who I am. I know it's pathetic of me, but I don't want to get in the way of Miyuki's dreams. I'm the crazy jealous type, you know? I'd never let her kiss another guy. So I can't let myself fall for her. I'd just be a burden on her. There are no miracles, no gods, all of it, all of it is a fantasy. You know that, right? I turn to look at her, and she's gone. So apparently she just straight up disappears if you're going down the wrong route, so she'll just pop out of existence. I'm all alone. It was all just in my head. Good grief, who did I think I was talking to? Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess we also just forget about her too. Muttering to myself, I kick the bat lying on the ground. I couldn't bring myself to swing it even once, and I'll probably never swing it again for the rest of my life. Not that I should have expected any different. Yeah, I guess this is just heading towards a bad route, or a bad ending at this point. It'll probably pan out in a very similar way to the first one. Or maybe exactly the same, who knows? Oh, yep, it's gonna be exactly the fucking same. Well, there you go. Oh, wait, something's different here. I'm in the classroom. What was that just now? Oh. Oh. One minute I have it set to auto, and the next I'm back at the title screen. Yeah, this is the exact title screen that we have. I guess I passed out while playing the game. My memories are kind of fuzzy. Shaking myself awake, I tap new game. So what's, uh, what's going on here? Oh my god, we're just going through this shit. Oh my god, it forced a new game on us. Kind of, I think? Is that what just happened? I think it just forced a new game on us. Okay. Alright. I, uh, I don't know if there's anything else that I can do differently here. I mean, we could just be friends again. So if we did Miyuki's route, wouldn't we want to do Aoi's route now? If that's even possible? I mean, we can just go through and see what happens, I, I guess, and see if something different happens here. This is what I dislike about visual novels with choices, is that now you have to go back and you have to figure out everything else out, figure out where the other routes are, if you will. Which isn't exactly fun, but... It is what it is. I appreciate visual novels that have routes. But I guess, in the end, it's a double-edged sword. Every time Yutaro pops up with that sad music, I just get reminded of his, uh... His plot, I guess. I don't know, what would have, what would happen now if we try to make a, uh, a bad... Like, try to get to a bad ending or something? I don't know. I mean, we know the directions of two bad ends. So, uh, what if we go through another good ending, or attempt to get to a good ending? See, I don't know what's gonna happen. I guess I can stop rambling and I can just stay quiet as we reprogress through the game and try to find something different. Oh, wait. Okay, wait. This is diff- Oh! Oh my god, there's only one. There's only one of these now. Oh, shit. It's a one-of-a-kind handmade item its expression is twisted slightly. Oh no, there's only one of those. There were two. So now I guess maybe this is what, you know, helps us decide uh, which route we're going down, you know? So let's give it to Aoi. Let's try that. Here, this is for you. I hand Aoi her gift. Huh, I guess I don't have a choice, do I? Does she actually want me to buy her something, or is she just saying that to get Aoi off her case? I'm not excited to find out. Miyuki thrusts her parcel into Aoi's hands. Think of it as a present from the both of us. Rula. 
Aoi quietly accepts the gift. Oh, okay, and now we're back to, I guess, the regular stuff. So that's interesting. That's different here. But why is it different? Is it because we're playing... Like, is it is it actually visual novel novelception now? Like, I'm not I'm not really sure how that happened. Uh-oh. Okay, well, wait, we already heard that. I don't know why that was different. Alright. Thanks. Mm. I can't see how he's God. I know the difference between reality and fiction. I'm not crazy enough to believe that her God will actually help me. But Aoi's praying for my sake. And it's the thought that counts. We didn't get that choice. We didn't get her trying to change reality or anything like that as a choice because it, it, it has already happened in this, uh, in this line here. Anyway, let's go find Miyuki. Mm. Okay, now we're back to the old skip -a -roo. I think this is where she was lightheaded or some shit. Uh-oh, what's going on here? Okay, so this is when we started running out to try and find Miyuki, or not Miyuki, Aoi, with Miyuki. She falls silent. For a moment, neither of us says a word. Got any idea where she could be? I guess we'll just have to search everywhere. In that case, we can meet up in my house. And so Miyuki and I split up to search the dark city. Where could she possibly bring a small animal this late at night? I can't think of anything. The situation- or the sedation square, sorry. The shopping district, the park, the roads leading to the school, the corner store, various fast food restaurants. With no clues to go on, we search and search and search. An hour passes. At some point during the hunt for Aoi, the rain lets up. Did you find her? I find Miyuki waiting for me outside my house. I can tell from the look on her face that she's given up entirely. But... Um, hmm. Do we give up or do we not give up? I'm going to say not. Let, let's not give up. This is a completely different choice now. So we are absolutely, <clears throat> excuse me, on a completely different line here. And this is how we were talking about. There's no chance in hell she went home to her parents' house. I don't know. I don't want to give up. I feel like there's got to be some clue. It's just a feeling I have in my gut. There's got to be something, right? It's no use. I can feel it right on the tip of my tongue, too. Okay, think. Where could I look for clues? I mean, we know where she's at. I'm not exactly sure which of these choices would be better to choose here. Because they're both going to bring us to the same place. We can go to the school pedestrian gate. The pedestrian gate in front of the school. Before I know it, I'm running at full speed. I passed by the school gates earlier on my way to check the cardboard box. Normally, it'd be a tiny forgettable detail. But right now, I'm strangely confident. I remember it being open. See, there we go. It's closed. Am I misremembering? I think we are. No, I can't be. <laughs> Miyuki catches up to me completely out of breath. But... That's my dog. I can't pretend I don't see the logic there, but... 
何まだ納得いかないなら不法侵入してみる Fuck it. I look up the, the, at the tall gate towering above us, sneaking onto school grounds at night. Even I'm not confident enough for that. Sorry for overreacting. <laughs> hmm. Methinks we should have checked the mobile game. Sorry for the, uh, like, literal background noise here. That's out of my control. We quietly turn away from the gates. Right, see you tomorrow. I head inside my house. I mean, we need some sort of, like, ambience, right? What a long day. In the end, I still have no idea where Aoi is or what she's doing. In fact, I don't even have concrete proof that she left the manga cafe to rescue the cat. All I can do is ask her tomorrow when I see her at school. I crawl into bed and quietly close my eyes. We're on a completely different route now. A route of events, if you will. Who knows what's happening? I don't even know at this point. Like, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens, but we'll have to be kind of... God damn it, my dogs. We'll have to be uh, patient, if you will. Morning. Uh-oh. What's up, buddy? You don't look too good. Yutaro almost never lets stuff get to him like this, which means the situation with his brother must be pretty serious. I've been thinking. Maybe what your brother needs is a girlfriend. He might be a little unstable right now, but if he had a proper romantic outlet in his life, he'd probably chill out. Doesn't it? You're the captain of the Boys and Dreams Club, aren't you? Surely you can help him find a dream or two. So I've heard. But your brother's a model, right? So he's gotta be good looking. Surely he can find someone to date without too much trouble. Oh, Oh, for real? Ohayou. Miyuki steps into the room and instantly the whole class livens up. As usual, she quick as usual, she quickly draws a crowd. Excuse me. She scans the room and her gaze stops on Aoi's empty empty desk. <laughs> Excuse me. God damn it! I can't speak. She shoots me a questioning look, but I don't have an answer for her. Damn, we just lost Aoi. Unless that's, that's what was supposed to happen. Like, either either option that we could have chosen back there, we're, we're screwed either way. That was the last time I saw Aoi before she disappeared. Wow, okay. So what happens now? Miyuki was in low spirits for a long time after that. But as for me, I have to believe there was more to her disappearance than just that. There has to be some other reason, something we don't understand. But even without Aoi around, my relationship with Miyuki stayed strong. Did it. I tried to ask my homeroom teacher about Aoi, but all he would tell me was we haven't heard anything from her. No one knows anything about her family situation either. Apparently no one else had any idea she was staying at a manga cafe in the first place. Ever since then, I've gone up to the center of the universe exactly once. I thought maybe if I called her from up there, my phone signal might reach her. I know it was just gamer brain. I was basically just hoping for a miracle. Unfortunate. But no matter how many times I tried, the call never went through. All I got were out-of-service error messages. But that's just how it goes, right? Some <laughs> Someone new comes into your life? And then next thing you know, they're gone. Another person comes, another person goes. Over and over and over. So what if she's gone? Nothing's changed. If anything, things have just gone back to normal. Aoi's not in my life anymore. And that's all there is to it. I'm sure I'll get used to it soon. I'll get used to it soon. I'll get used to it. Yeah, I'm sure we're doing a great job at preparing ourselves for that. 
I mean, we did just fine when we forgot about her. Obviously. Okay. What am I looking at here? As soon as Utara steps into the classroom, he walks over and slaps a piece of paper on my desk. A club resignation form. Wait, there's something written above it. A letter of expulsion. Wait, what did we do this time around? Okay. I mean, I didn't want to join in the first place. You have fun without me, buddy. Yutaro can keep screaming all he likes, but I... Huh? Out of nowhere, Yutaro grabs me by the collar. He glares at me with an intensity about 50% more obnoxious than usual. Yutaro? What? What is happening? What? Cutting ties? The familiar word pierces my heart. Come on, that's not funny. The memory of that fateful day flashes through my mind. If Miyuki hadn't threatened to cut ties with Aoi back then, maybe we'd still be friends today. But it's all over now. Aoi disappeared without protest. And now our friendship is over. It's all in the past now. Shinichi! Yutaro screams in my face, but it doesn't reach me. There is no god in my world, no divine signal. My only choice is to get used to my new life without her. My only choice is to keep on living. She vanished of her own volition. I know that, okay? I know that. I'm constantly looking for an excuse to not do anything. That way I avoid feeling pathetic. That way I avoid getting hurt. This is just the kind of guy I am. So I'll just have to get used to it. Yutaro whips his hands off of me like I'm trash. I stumble backwards and catch myself on a desk. He shoves the letter of expulsion at me. This is like totally different. What Muko's taught me. Did you really teach me anything? Ah. Oh, hey, Haru-chan. You do? And so a witness turns up, in the most unlikely of places. According to Haru-chan, on that rainy night, she'd been working the register when Aoi turned up, kitten in tow. The kitten was starving and Aoi wanted to feed him. That was how their friendship started, and even after Aoi stopped coming to school, Haru-chan encountered her a handful of times. Was she trying to make a call? はい。何度も Come to think of it, I never did check inside her phone. She never did send me a single email. Huh, <laughs> same here. Hell yeah, she is. Haru-chan smiles shyly. She seems like she's more comfortable around me now. Her smile's so cute, I can't help but stare. If she's in the theater club, does that mean she'll share the stage with Miyuki at some point? Uh, I... 
ほんの少しだけ勇気をもらった気がするんです今までと違う新しい自分になろうってそう思えたんですだからその思い切ってお願いしていいですか Oh, I'm down with it. Sure, you've been a huge help, so I'm happy to return the favor. Kiss. Oh, I don't want to. What? Don't tell me you want me to kiss you. Hi. Kiss. Oh, Janaka, the Yuka. So Janine, this. So Janak, the. What is your kiss? Not the. Zen, 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 Zen. I see. Let's just take a deep breath and calm down, shall we? Shy and clumsy to a fault, this one. And I'm all about it. Oh, sorry, one sec. I pull out my phone and check my inbox. There's a new email from Miyuki. Are you busy later? I need to talk to you. Please come by the batting cages tonight. It's important. So, this is basically, you know, the same thing that we got in the original route. The moon is gorgeous tonight. Crickets chirp as I walk down by the river. I haven't been back to the batting cages since that fateful day. Miyuki's form is beautiful just as it always is. The baseball flies up and hits the net. I'll pass. Not really, and apparently you don't get tired of swinging either. Somehow I feel like I know what she's getting at. Miyuki swings that bat like she's been freed from all the world's troubles. いなくなって遠く離れて寂しくなってやっと分かった本当のことを言うわ私青井が嫌いだったそばにいたくなかった逃げ出したかったでも虫もできなかった but she still didn't want to be around her. She turns back to face me. The batting cages are dead silent. Everything comes to a standstill. I'm rooted at the spot like she's got me by the heart. I get it. I understand why Miyuki would envy a stubborn, uncompromising girl like Aoi. And now that Aoi's changed her, I know what she's going to say. She was terrified of hurting anyone and of getting hurt herself. And now she suppressed her feelings for all these years. Her hair flutters in the wind, anime-esque and all that. Finally, the frozen space between us melts to life again. And we have Aoi to thank for that. One of your club underlings, Haru-chan, was it? She asked me to kiss you. Haru-chan? Two reasons. One, to help make the play a success. And two, because Aoi asked her to ask me. Aoi? She said she ran into Aoi a few times since her disappearance. And according to her, Aoi said she'd been praying for me and you to finally get together. So Neither of us says it, but we both know. Aoi chose to disappear in order to help our relationship blossom. She was afraid of getting in the way of our romance. Miyuki. I quietly approach her. Normally she gives off this intimidating vibe, but physically, I'm bigger than her by a long shot. 
She looks up at me, eyes full of hope and worry. Whatever it was Aoi was trying to grant me my, by making herself scarce, please let it be the courage to take this last step. Let me have the strength to face my feelings, even if it means I'll get hurt. It's time to finally confess everything I've secretly felt all this time. I want to kiss you, Miyuki. Not for the play. Not because Aoi wants me to, but because I've always loved you. Here it is. A, a more, I, I guess, legitimate confession, if you will? They say life is a series of choices, but that's a load of crap. God's not up there rolling the dice. What ifs don't exist. Yesterday leads to today. Excuse me, and today leads to tomorrow. What lies ahead? I'm about to find out. Slowly we draw close. That's a big deal, guys. I slowly close my eyes. And with this, our hearts are finally one. Okay, nice. Pretty much a similar confession, but I would say more concrete, visual novel-esque. It wasn't drawn out or anything like that. Yeah. We look down at the old gymnasium from our vantage point on the roof. After that night, I joined the theater club. What? Why'd we do that? I had one goal, to make them revise Miyuki's kiss scene. I knew it was selfish, but I simply couldn't tolerate the thought of some other guy kissing my girlfriend. Naturally, the director and playwright were completely against it. The play was already coming together nicely, and once they nailed the kiss scene, it would be perfect. If they were to change it now, they wouldn't be able to polish it in time, they said. They probably didn't appreciate some rando showing up out of nowhere and demanding such a massive overhaul. I didn't blame them, of course. But I refused to back down. I went to them over and over and over again. I know, I'm a jealous little bastard. You really are. The main character is just really shitty, I have to say. As I look out at the sunset, I can hear the cheers of the crowd. I'm sorry. I know I was being selfish. Miyuki smiles at me without a hint of resentment. She was the one who ultimately settled the fate of the play. I'm told she went to them and threatened to resign from her role if they left the kiss scene intact. And now she, now here she is, standing by my side. Okay, well here's the thing, if she wants to go out and be a big ol' actor and all that, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to get used to kissing some random ass people. Man, female, whatever's in between. You know, just do it. It, it doesn't mean anything, it's acting. She put so much hard work into her rehearsals. It was her chance to make it into the big leagues. And now she's thrown it all away. The old me would have felt guilty as hell. But I'm different now. I see the sacrifice she's made and I love her all the more for it. And now I'm going to make her happy for the rest of her life. That's the promise I've made to myself. Yeah? Hand in hand, we look up at the westerly sky. The sun sinks beyond the skyline. We stand there wordlessly. Our hearts beat as one, pulsing with the flow of time. The sun burns crimson as it makes its slow descent. Damn, it got dark in a hurry. Then, finally, night falls. One by one, the town's lights flicker to life. As if in response, the stars come out overhead. This is my first time being on the roof at night. Together we lose ourselves in the breathtaking view. How much time has passed now? Oh, well, this is, uh, very similar. I guess we're on the, uh, we only get one choice yet again, so here we go, boys. We're back on track. Wait, what's going on? Not again. I recognize the pa- oh, wait, God damn it! Another letter of expulsion. I thought I was already expelled earlier, though. Still, I know full well how he feels about Miyuki. I ought to man up and explain myself. Okay, and here we go. I guess a little bit of line changes here and there, but all the same. Okay, I can't really show anything here, but uh... She basically just asked if we're going to fuck her again, and now we're asking again. She's saying to forget- I can't show anything on the screen right now, like, at all, so... Okay, well, that was, uh, that was really weird. 
Doesn't seem like there's anything else going on here. Looks like we're just messing up, we're nervous. I, I hate that I have to describe this, but it is what it is. Oh wait, excuse me? Fate? I suppose it is. Wait, what was the context here? What was that context? I was gonna say, here we are back on the same route and everything, but there, there was just a little bit of overlap. That was weird. That was really weird how there was a little bit of overlap. And she was saying some weird shit. I don't want to watch the credits again. Please let me skip the Thank you. That was really different. Well, not really different, but it was different nonetheless. And nothing seems different here. I wish I can click the cat or the phone or something and something would just happen. Hmm. Okay, so... What would happen if we go back to that choice and we choose to go check the mobile game? Would we just be on the same route that we were on? I'm not exactly sure where to go with this. I, I don't know. Okay, so we'll choose the mobile game. The mobile game. Because I'm thinking this is just going to get us back on the first route because we'll find her again, right? There's this game I borrowed from Yutaro. It's got a character that's dead on exactly like Aoi. Not just looks-wise, either. They act identical, too. That day we met on met her on the roof, almost the same exact thing happened in this one scene. <sighs> Miyuki sighs exasperated. I mean, yeah. No, listen to me. I was acting out scenes from the game. When she found that stray kitten, everything she said was like a one-to-one -one rep uh, reproduction of... Oh, uh, would she really go to all that trouble just to recreate a scene out of the game? I can't see any reason for her to put that much effort into it. Uh, well, uh, a divine miracle, maybe? Miyuki raises her voice. Oh, right. Of course. I was trying to use my head. Guess I ended up babbling like a crazy person. God damn it. We can't sleep. My brain won't stop thinking about it. The loner phone sits on my- or sits on charge by my pillow. I haven't played it since that one day during class. Maybe I'd learn something useful about Aoi if I made some progress in the game? Yeah, let's, let's fucking play the game. Maybe Miyuki has a point. Maybe I'm just con conflating video games with reality. I mean, there's no way Aoi went out of her way to procure a cat for this. But I keep thinking back to the day that I saw her standing out in the rain. I can picture her wandering aimlessly down the darkened streets, kitten in tow. Fuck it. Call it a bad case of gamer brain, I don't give a shit. At this point, I'll do anything to clear up these lingering doubts. Let's do this. I jump out of bed and grab the loner phone. You know, hopefully something happens here. I think this will get us onto a different route. 20 minutes later, I'm standing in front of the school gates. They're completely locked up tight, and there's even a padlock on the pedestrian gate. There's no other way to sneak in. But if that game is true to life, then Aoi is definitely in there. This is my last chance to turn back. I pause at the entrance to take a deep breath. Yeah, we're going into the fucking school, man. I feel like that's the only way we can get into a different route. I put my hands on the bars of the school gates. The metal is wet from the rain and quite a bit colder than I was expecting. The loud rattling echoes through the moonlit campus, but I don't care. I haul myself up and jump over in one fluid motion. Watch us get caught and get a bad ending or some shit. Here I am alone on school grounds in the middle of the night. It's a little eerie to tell the truth. In any other situation, I'd probably turn around and run home with my tail between my legs. And yet, strangely enough, I find myself in high spirits. Okay. At night, the inside of my shoe locker extends in an endless tunnel of darkness. As I change into my indoor shoes, the slightest clack of my soles on the linoleum seems to reverberate like a gunshot. Or however that was pronounced. It's kind of incredible how a few hours difference can turn a familiar location into an entirely different world. Aoi is here somewhere, lurking in the dark. I'm strangely confident about this. I sneak down the halls, careful not to make a sound. 
I mean, we saw where we where she was, right? Bingo. There are puddles of rainwater on the floor. And these puddles form a trail. To the theater, right? The auditorium. Yeah. Where are you? My voice echoes and fades into the darkness. The gym is pitch black. Normally, there wouldn't be a soul here at this hour. Owie, I... Oh, excuse me. Owie, I know you're in here. Meow. And there we go. I heard that. That was Owie's voice just now. I'm sure of it. Come on, answer me. Meow. The kitten meows back in Owie's stead. I follow the sound of the stage area. Owie. Uh. Found her. All by herself this time, instead of with Miyuki. Give me a break. What are you doing in that stupid onesie? Did you really feel the need to put it on just because you rescued a kitten? <laughs> You got caught out in the rain, didn't you? Did you forget to bring your umbrella again? Look, we can't have you getting sick. Uh. Owie doesn't say a word. She refuses to respond. I reach out to take her hand. Let's just go back to my place and... She slaps my hand away, outright rejecting my help. But I refuse to go home empty-handed. Don't be like that, the little thing's probably freezing. The kitten meows as if in agreement. What? What? Don't be stu- Okay, well this has already happened like twice, so I'm kind of tired of it. Yeah, she told me as much from the start, but that doesn't matter now. So, I think you did the right thing. Aoi's feeble whisper stabs into my heart, sharper than any scream. Aoi turns her back to me. Her small frame fades into the shadows. The echo of her footsteps grows faint. Then she vanishes into the backstage area. Is this really for the best? Owie. Before I know it, I find myself running after her. I lunge forward and grab her hand. Wait. Yeah. Owie. Owie tries to get away, but I block her path. Her eyes are swimming with tears. Tears of sadness. Your life does have a purpose. No. That is a... Uh... Wide-eyed expression. I mean, yes, I admit, I think you were weird at first. Completely unpredictable, always alone, and then you randomly tried to blackmail us. But as time passed, I started to worry about you. And I started to enjoy having you around. No, I'm not. Look at me. I've got absolutely nothing going for me. I hate being in the spotlight. My life is boring and uneventful, and I prefer to keep it that way. And yet here I am, trespassing on school grounds at night. All for the sake of tracking you down. Miyuki doesn't matter right now. I'm your friend, remember? The dam bursts, the tears roll down her cheeks. I won't let her cut ties with you. The three of us will be friends forever. I'm down with the route that's just, you know, total, like, let's just all three of us be, a, like, friendos. I'm down with that. Aoi jumps into my arms.
Damn, she's just really letting it all out. She buries her face in my chest and begins to sob. I gently stroke her hair. We're both so bad at this friendship thing, but we can just figure things out as we go along. I'm sure of it. Meow. Meanwhile, the kitten meows at us like she's or like he's cheering us on. I just came up with a theory, if you guys want to hear it. I think we'll uh, wrap up this episode here, since I think we are going into a new route completely different this time around. So I'll save it. Here's my theory. This entire time I thought that Aoi was the one being the one, like the, the fourth wall breaker, if you will. Like she knows that this is a visual novel and is changing it for our benefit, but she also plays like a character. Like she is trying to be a part of the visual novel. Well, <laughs> I think we can say something very similar with Miyuki based on what she said at the end of our second go around with her route, saying that it was fate to be with her. Like we cannot be without her or else it's bad end. What if that's the case? What if there's two individuals here, both are fucking female <laughs> main characters that actually know about this being just a game. Life is a game and all that. That's my prediction. Let me know what you guys think. No spoilers, please. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz. This was an interesting one, to say the least. Very different than our previous episodes so far with all the jumping around and all that, but nonetheless a good one. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.